Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Welcome to Two Women in Crypto, a weekly podcast birthed on a whim by two women who are excited about the cryptocurrency landscape and have a shared passion about empowering others to step into the digital, tokenized world of the future. We offer tips, tricks, and our own individual insights as to how to begin to navigate this shift. We are not financial advisors nor experts. We are just here to encourage you to look at the possibilities. So welcome to the future. You're right on time. Good morning. Good morning, beautiful. Oh, how are you today? Back at you, by the way. Cheers. Please. Yes. We've got our whiskey in hand this morning. Hypothetical. Yeah, I think we need it. All right. Well, welcome back to Two Women in Crypto. It's so exciting to be here. I love doing these uh, podcasts with you every week. I really look forward to this. I mean, this is awesome. Yeah, it's, you know, the way the the balls have been rolling recently. This is like my one opportunity to kind of really sit down and lean in. So, and I'm sure it's that way for a lot of people out there who, you know, are listening to us every week. So thank you as always for doing the research because you're leaning into it all the time. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you. So yeah, thank you. And I appreciate everybody because it really keeps me going. You know what I mean? Like, I love all the support that we've been receiving. It's just, it's awesome. And, you know, we're in the thick of it, right? We have all these different bills that are heading to Congress. And, you know, there's so much adoption going on in blockchain. It can be overwhelming, you know, very confusing. But at the same time, you know, every once in a while, something happens and it's so inspirational. So I wanted to kind of just touch base about Eric Voorhees. He works for Permissionless and he gave a speech and Kelly and I included the link. Yep, it'll be below. Um, and it's like, why are we here? You know what I mean? Like, why are we here? Like the essence of crypto is non-compliant. It's rebellious. It's radical. Mm -hmm. We don't need permission. Right. from the government okay i mean the, it's so amazing and <clears throat> you know i think about bitcoin and and the development of bitcoin when satoshi or whoever it was right that released the white paper again it's like people need to understand bitcoin was the first technological breakthrough for peer-to-peer transactions without permission from a third party entity from a bank yeah i mean that should really put some air underneath everybody's wings exactly exactly you know so when people are like well I, you know money is already digital but it's still permission if you're using venmo paypal zell you need permission to make that transfer Right. And if money makes the world go round, Kel, do we need permission to exist? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is all about, and, and again, it's like, I, I don't know how long it is. It's maybe about a half an hour, but I mean, mind blowing, super articulate. We are so blessed to have Eric like on our side, like that kind of brain power, you know, it's just so cool. And that's kind of why I wanted to name today's podcast a declaration of independence. Mm. You know what I mean? Sure. Because yeah. like before cryptocurrency, everything we did, we needed permission. And now that cryptocurrency is here, we see the government and we see all the banksters trying to make it. So we need permission to use crypto. Right. So so here we are, we're at this special moment of time. We're going through a transition to a new economy that's based on the blockchain. We have an opportunity for permissionless money. Well, it's like what we always say is be willing to step out of line and not just 
do what you're being told to do in general. Just kind of use your own brain, if you will. Um, and this is part of that. It is really part of it is being able to think for yourself and make choices for yourself that are, you know, at your best interest in your best interest, not necessarily in the best interest of the businesses outside of, you know, the business model of the world governments. No, exactly. It's, a, it's such a good point. Like it's like, now's the time to step out of line. I mean, the thing is, it's like, when I think about, and all the times that we have spoken about this, if you can just take some time and research cryptocurrency and the blockchain, you will invest in it. You will, you know, you will learn how transformational this can be to, to help society shift into an age of enlightenment. Right. Okay. Right. Because right now we're living in an age of serfdom. We need permission to do almost everything. Right. Sure. Absolutely. So, you know, I mean, I'm super excited about it. I mean, I got so fired up, you know what I mean? And at the same time, we have all these bills, right, in Congress. And it's just like, this technology will either enslave us or liberate us to sovereignty. And here we go. You know, so Kelly and I just were really encouraging everyone, share the video, share our newsletters that we write like we just share 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 right this is all about humanity this isn't about money sure it's great that we're part of the biggest transfer of wealth that's ever going to happen in the history of the world but more importantly we need to be able to do it in a permissionless permissionless way right absolutely yep cheers to that whiskey clink 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 all right so again um he also said, you know, it's really interesting if you go back like 120 years ago in, in society, you know, it's kind of like we didn't need permission, right? We kept the money that we made. Can you imagine like, right? How much better the world would be if everybody could keep most of their money and how about creating laws, right? That bypass the Securities Exchange Commission when Gary Gensler, Goldman Gary, he doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about us. He cares about JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley and BlackRock. You know, Senator Warren, okay, Elizabeth Warren, who just put an anti crypto bill and how deceiving the headlines are. Nine senators back Senator Warren's anti-crypto law okay well there's a hundred senators so why are you you know the 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 bill should be about liberating the people not like ooh, nine senators agree with senator warren it's like, yeah i mean that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to be in the mainstream media in terms of news is like every everything that they post is just so misleading and you know steering you one direction or another so Thank you for filtering through all of that. <laughs> That'll definitely drive you to the bottle, hence the whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's just like, you know, if we look at history and we look at like what's going on right now, right? With the SEC, Janet Yellen's in charge of the United States Treasury. They told us inflation was transitory. It mm -hmm. was going to work its way out of the system, right? Now it's kind of entrenched. The numbers are manipulated and here we have a better system that's built on the blockchain. Okay. Laws done by math, physics, code, right? Not the corruption of mostly men that are making these laws that benefit the few. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I'm not, my mind is blown, but folks, come on. It's time. It's time. Bitcoin halves in April, 2024, we will get a signed legislation bill. Okay. All of these ETFs are going to be approved. And I, you know, when you add up BlackRock, Fidelity, uh, Franklin Templeton mm -hmm. applied for a spot Bitcoin ETF, Invesco. I mean, there's probably about 12 of them now. 
totals seventeen point seven trillion dollars. What these companies are worth. What if they just put in half a percent into Bitcoin? Oh what God. would the price of Bitcoin be, right? Yeah. And what concerns me is that the people that don't do any research, right, that don't take that chance to buy a speculative asset like Bitcoin, that's peer-to-peer -peer transactions without permission, that catches stranded energy from mm -hmm. shale gas, hydro, nuclear, wind, solar, stabilizing the energy grid. Does that sound like a speculative asset? And yeah. what happens, right? And what happens when these ETFs get approved and we go into the next bull cycle, will the average person be able to actually own a quarter of a Bitcoin? Well, there you go. There's, those are all the questions, right? Yeah. I know it's exciting. It's really, it's super exciting. So if you're listening to this, we do a Q and a at the end of the month, question and answer, ask us anything. And it's always the last Saturday of the month at 11 AM Eastern. It's 10 bucks. Come bring your questions. The time is now, right? Kelly and I have like our slogan, you're right on time and you are, but that, that, this is like a period of accumulation, okay, right. in the cryptocurrency industry and accumulate during a bear market when things are boring and when there's like a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Because once the mainstream media starts flooding the marketing materials, when all of these companies get approval for their spot Bitcoin ETF, I'm, I'm guaranteeing it floods of of mass marketing and what's going to happen you know like people are going to start buying bitcoin at 50 60 grand not when it's under 30 grand right absolutely and not to say that at that time isn't necessarily going to be a bad time it's not going to be the best time but it's certainly i mean now is the time like you say if you have any dry powder sitting on the side and of course none of this is financial advice and as we always say it's the dollar cost averaging theory Ten dollars. If you have ten dollars today and you choose to skip that cup of coffee at Starbucks, then yeah, put it in. Totally. That's you know I have my own DCA plan that I do, and if I have extra cash lying around or somehow I get a gift card or something, ah, it's like oh good, more crypto for Kelly. Yep. See, like right now, here, here's a gift card I just got. More crypto for Kelly, right here. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> crypto for Kelly. That that's a whole new show crypto with Kelly. anyway that's not crypto for kelly is the theme though yeah. <laughs> awesome awesome so you know as society changes and we build more governance and we build a government mm -hmm. on the blockchain it's happening folks check out charles hodgkinson with cardano you know what i mean it's just like when people reach this certain level in all the governments, it's not just the United States, but all governments around the world, it's like, even if their intentions are good, it's really hard to have a strong mind and to be in a place of love and non-ego that gets like, you know, infiltrated and corrupt, right? So it's like code is going to be law, smart contracts where you can't change your mind. You know what I mean? In the middle of, of a contract. Right. Okay. If the president of the United States says something and that goes into a smart contract, if that smart contract is not fulfilled, you know, maybe we could put them on the billboard in Times Square and all around the world, just like China does when people jaywalk. Okay. Sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you jaywalk, they facially recognize Chinese citizens and they put it up on, they put the people up on the screen and they shame them. What if we shamed our politicians? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that they did that. Well, there you go. It's called a social credit score. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is. then, and then, and then you get fines. 
in the moment and they take that out. Okay, that's called a central bank digital currency where they can actually take the money out of your account. They can airdrop it in, but if you don't play by their rules in a permissioned way. Right, non-compliant. It's time to be non-compliant. Yeah. yeah, 100%, okay? Because we the people are in charge. And, and I think we the people have forgotten about the constitution and all the rights that we have. The government is here to make our lives better, not tell us how to live our lives. Well, I think that's where people lean into what is the understanding of the government and the steps that they're taking, how is it gonna make our life better? And so how is that bill of goods gonna be sold to the general public? And there's gonna be that part of the population that's like, man, that is gonna make my life better. And so they're going to step right in line and participate. And then there's going to be those that have been leaning in and are, you know, or something just doesn't feel right. And they're going to lean into the other options. So, and that's what we encourage is just to lean into it. If you choose to participate, whatever is down the road, then that's your choice. But yeah, there are other options out there. They just take a little bit of understanding. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is, we all know that we can download an app on our phone or even an app like Exodus on the computer, you know? So you got Exodus, we got Trust Wallet, we got Atomic Wallet. You wanna buy some Bitcoin on Coinbase, send it off. And then eventually get yourself a hardware wallet so you have that extra layer of security. Right. Because then you don't need permission to transact. Right, exactly. Yep, yep, exactly. Awesome. So, you know, I'm looking at like all the different, like everything is just obviously happening really, really quickly. You know, it's like change is so slow and then it just happens all at once. Right. So it's kind of like, I just feel like it, it is time to become your own bank, right? You can become your own central bank, even with a free wallet, like a trust wallet or Exodus. Awesome. So. That's it, because the more I look at what's going on, even with like, you know, you want to fly into Atlanta, it's voluntary now, but you're going to have to do facial recognition. And again, people are like, well, they know everything about me already. Well, now we have a moment of time where we can actually change that. So do you want to stay with the status quo of corruption and like the mismanagement of like all of the funds we created? so much money during the 2020 crisis yeah and then yeah. That, and 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 are we really surprised that inflation is really high right <laughs> you know oh, well and then the student loan situation that begins october 1st the repayment <clears throat> so that's going to have a big impact as well so anyway that's a whole other yeah. topic and again it's just like you know for everybody that takes out an exorbitant amount of student mm -hmm. loans student loans makes up 40% of the government's income. Yep. They're not going to cancel your student loan, right? That's all the money they have. So they need you to go to the indoctrination camps and learn what they want you to learn so you could go be good citizens of the government, right? You learn what we tell you to learn. And, and we have to shift this thinking moving forward because we have an opportunity to, to like, again, just live permissionless. You don't need permission to live. You don't, you know what I mean? We steer the ship, Cal. Yes. Cheers. Clink. Clink. Yeah, clink. Lots of whiskey going down this morning. Anyway. Yeah. Cause like, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at all the data and again, it's like, you have your money at like Wells Fargo or you're walking through TSA, you know, at the airport. They're scanning your face for facial recognition. Where is that data going? Is that going to the blockchain at the Atlanta airport? Or is that on a centralized like cloud server that can be easily hacked? And if you think it's not possible, what happened just a couple of days ago with like, a what, what, is it a multi-million or multi-billion dollar aircraft that got hacked? and ejected the pilot and then our strong leadership doesn't even know where the plane is 
Oh, and whether, <laughs> whether a whole nother, I mean, who knows what really took place on that scenario, but that is just wild, right? It's, it's so wild. And at the same time, we need to become our own bank. We need to take back our power because our, you know, it's a, if you're red, if you're, it doesn't matter, red, blue, purple, yellow, who cares? It's, it's one of the same at this point. Yeah, you know what I yeah. mean? I think about FTX, you know, FTX failed how long ago? Did Gosh, the Republicans yeah. and Democrats pay back the customers of FTX for the donations that they received from Sam Bankman Freed? Right. They yeah. didn't. So, <laughs> it's time to take, it's time for a shift. That's all I'm saying. And I don't want it to be a centralized digital ID. I know we need a digital ID. There's no way to get around it, but it could be decentralized. It could be on the blockchain where we own our data. That's the difference between moving from web 2.0, the age of information to web 3.0, where we own our data. So it's time to own our data, yeah, right? Yeah. And we can always use Flux and Akash Network you know, save all our documents up on the cloud in a decentralized way, not one point of failure. There's tens of thousands of servers all around the world. I want my data there, not at some local TSA agent when we can't even protect our fire, the, the, the fighter or the pilot who's flying around in a multi-gazillion dollar aircraft that just gets ejected. <laughs> that doesn't make me feel good. It doesn't make me feel safe and it doesn't make me like trust the system. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. I had not heard that um, theory, to be quite frank. I've heard other things, but I had not heard that particular theory on what yeah. took place. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know the details. I don't need to know the details. The fact that it happened makes me not feel safe. The fact that we let a Chinese air balloon fly across the United States does not make me feel safe. So when the government says, hey, do all these things so you feel safe, I I, I, I hope that you question this and do the opposite because the government is not here to make you feel safe. The government is here to control you, to control your data. And that's the bottom line. So I'm getting really intense, but between the bills, the digital IDs, it's happening. Like it's it's totally happening. You know, and if we don't want a central bank digital currency, human beings are going to have to get out of their comfort zone, right? And we're going to have to rise. Now, there was an anti-CBDC bill that got passed in the House yesterday. So we need Sorry. to, con yeah, cool. So let's contact our House of Representatives. Let's contact our senators. We need that bill passed. We also need a bill passed that gives people the right to be their own bank, to store your cryptocurrency or any of your stable coins on the blockchain without permission. Why do we need permission to hold our money? Right, yeah. You know, when we go and pay our taxes and they ask us how much cryptocurrency we hold, whether we sold it or not, they're not asking us how much gold and silver you hold. Yeah. How many how many eggs you have in your fridge, Kel? Because they'll know that too soon one day. Oh, Are they sure. already do if you have a smart a smart refrigerator. They already do. They know exactly what's in that that refrigerator. Well, yeah. So it makes me be like, say you want a revolution, and it's going to be peaceful because all we have to do is shift into the blockchain and shift into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies that preserve our privacy that allow us to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions, right? We have those options. We have those options and it's very exciting. Very, very exciting. <clears throat> the other thing that I was pretty excited about is um, there's a candidate running for president in Argentina. His name is Javier Malay. And what, what excites me about this is like one, Argentina was an extremely wealthy country, mm -hmm. Ex like extremely wealthy, thriving. 
economy until the government got involved and inflated their money away. So now the Argentine dollar isn't worth anything. So what this uh, presidential candidate is talking about is restoring all the freedom and sovereignty that people deserve. And Tucker Carlson, I don't care if you love him, hate him, I don't really care. But the bottom line is this, 334 million people viewed that, okay? That's what we need. I don't care who's doing it. Put all your judgments aside and focus on what these people are saying. Because it's just like, if people are watching and people are getting educated, then like, if that happened to Argentina, that can happen here and it is happening, right? And what a great way to do it, to create so much chaos. Immigrants crossing the border, pilot getting ejected from the plane. All of these things are happening all at once. And while, and they're doing all these backdoor deals and it's not going to be to keep folks safe. Right. Right. Yep. They have their agenda. They have their agenda going on here. So. Right on, right on. So I did take some time. Um, so last week there was like a CBDC and stable coin hearing at the Congress. And, um, it was really kind of fun because so that guy, Brad Schumann from California, who like he's, mm. he's bad, he's just so bad, but he's against the central bank digital currency. Go Brad. Right. There's, we all have points. We all have good points. I've got points. Yep. You know what I mean? So it looks like it's not going to pass, but at the same time, if I'm get, if I'm using my USDC, my, my United States digital coin, right. That's not a central bank digital dollar. It can still be censored and it could, you know, and, and again, they can still do those choke points. Okay. So it's not the best, but I don't, I think for now, there's not going to be any central bank digital currency. For yeah. now. For not now. without, not without like an event, <clears throat> you know? That's probably going to happen because there's all these cybersecurity issues. I know down in uh in Vegas, one of the big hotels, they got cyber hacked. I saw that. My yeah. Was that MGM, Kel? I it was one of the big ones. I'm not I'm not sure. Like people couldn't even get into their rooms, right? Um, it shut down the shut down the really closed their doors every which way. There was nothing that they could do from my understanding. Right. So again, one point of failure, one server. And in the near future, every single hotel, insurance company, real estate company, you name it, everything is moving to the blockchain because it's just way more secure. Right. You know, exactly. Exactly. So it's happening. <laughs> happening but there will be chaos in between the threads for sure such as yeah such oh. as like everyday life right now the chaos <laughs> is here you know like censorship is here yeah. people's yeah. youtube channels are getting taken down people's bank accounts this dude inherited money from his family put 200 grand in at wells fargo they told him it was fraud and it bounced his mortgage payment so here we go. Are we in the land of the free, the home of the brave? Are you innocent until proven guilty? We need this back because right now we are guilty until we are proven innocent. And it hurts us. Yeah, it's I don't tough. know. Oh, yeah. It's and it's, I don't know why we're like just accepting the status quo. It, it cannot go on like this much longer. You know, it, it cannot. I think people are just leaning. I mean, I think people are just trying to get educated slowly, whether they realize it or not. And you see that you see more and more people beginning to have the curtains part and they're beginning to see things. So, and I think this is the age of truth. I mean, the truth continues, right? Every day you hear something, you know, another story as a possibility. Again, you have to lean into all stories. There's so many different fractals to them, but it is still a time very much so of truths being revealed. And I'm in favor of that, even in the chaos. It's really important to have those truths come out. So, yeah, but you got to be willing to look at them. That's the key. 
Right. And like, and just understand that the centralized systems are falling to pieces. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's obvious they are scrambling for more control and more power, but just like they can't stop information from flowing on the internet, they can slow it down, but you can't stop it. They're not going to be able to stop the, you know, transferring value through the internet, which is web 3.0. Right. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's going to be really interesting. Like that from now through the election, I don't know if we'll get a signed bill because I mean, we're almost entering October. We have an, a major election in a year. I don't know if they'll sign a bill before that. They might make it into like an, a political agenda, which is ridiculous because oh, I'm sure <laughs> very much, I think it's very much going to be on the, it's very much going to be part of that whole, right. yeah, their right. process. But having permissionless blockchain is the answer to what's going on right now. You know what I mean? So it's, it, we have the technology. It is here. Like Charles Hodgkinson says. We didn't ask for permission. We came here and we're going to get it done. Yeah, so there you go. We're going to see what happens. Keep All right. So, me. yeah. So what else do we have? We have, um, we have a bill that's like the Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank does not have the right to issue a central bank digital currency. That's one of the bills. Um, that I, I think that's the bill that got passed on the floor yesterday. So we want to we want to watch this and we want to make sure that everyone signs off on this, right, in the Senate, and that Biden hopefully will sign off. I don't know. He's Biden is pro um, censorship. Okay, mm-hmm. they lost the social media case when they went to the Supreme Court. And the Biden administration appealed it, okay? Because you don't have the right to speak your truth. You don't have the right to think differently than the government of the United States. Mind blowing, mind blowing. It's gotta stop. It's gotta stop. Makes me wanna just put everything on Bitcoin and Monero. (laughs) Well, that's an option. And listen to our song that I wrote Monero, right? Because it's all about private privacy blockchain. You know, you're pretty much invisible when you're transferring peer-to-peer money. Okay. And the government spent six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to be like, hey, let's try to hack the Monero blockchain. But they can't because the code is so good. Because it's people like us that are developing the code. And they can't break into it. So what are they going to do? They're going to try to regulate it out of existence. Yeah. Just yeah. like they're doing with Ripple and XRP. Just like the SEC is trying to do with Uniswap. Right? We're lucky. The checks and balances, at least in the court system, seem to be working. Because that got kicked out. Yep, you can't did. do Uniswap because no one controls it. No one owns Uniswap. It's, it's a public good. Right. So if you get your trust wallet or your Exodus wallet, you can connect it to Uniswap and you can actually make a trade and get all of the crypto that you want on a decentralized private exchange that's based on math, algorithms, physics. OK, it's solving the solution, bringing order mm-hmm. to a chaotic <laughs> system. And what does the SEC do? No, 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 no. We're going to sue them. Of course. And again, the judge threw the case out because there's nobody to sue. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Same thing with Binance. I don't know if CZ, the CEO of Binance, I don't know if he's a good person or a bad person. But when I watch how the SEC goes after them, I don't see them having all this evidence and, and, and suing Binance. I see them saying, give us all your books. Right. <clears throat> yeah. We're guilty until we prove you innocent. Exactly. Well, and on that point, you know, we're, and I think it's just a reminder consistently that we're still in the wild, wild west, right? And we are going to be for still some time. And that if you are using any exchange, 
I don't care who you are, maybe outside of Coinbase, I think Coinbase is chosen one, but regardless, it's really foolish of you to be keeping anything on an exchange because yeah. the SEC is on a rampage and they're not done. They've made it very clear that they're not done. You know, Binance is the talking point right now, but there are others on the chopping block, I am sure. So absolutely. See this cup, according to Gary Gensler, that's a security. <laughs> Things of security. Oh, well, there you go. Yep. You know. But it is. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how centralized is our system? Right. I'm watching the FOMAC meeting, right? The financial oversight um committee yesterday, and they raise in, you know, the are they gonna raise interest rates? Are they gonna keep it the same? To the fact that everyone listens to Jerome Powell speak and the words and how he delivers his speech that controls whether the market goes up and down. Is that centralized or is that decentralized? <laughs> you know? uh, and didn't he say that they're not expecting a soft landing? I think yeah. it's like, okay, people, if you want to hang on to anything, hang on to that at least. We're not expecting a soft landing. So get your life vests out, get your floaties prepared yeah. because we might need a, a soft yeah. land. And if you go back in time and you make like, you make like a skit, you know, and like you look at all the things that these people have said to us, it's like lies, 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 lies. It's like they, they're, you're like a frog in the pot and I mean, it's getting, right? It's like, you know, it's just like, stay home, watch Netflix, don't worry about anything. You know, let's print a gazillion dollars. And then, oh, you know, I'm so surprised that there's inflation. Really, you're in charge of the money in the United States of America. And you're surprised, like, you know, our school systems, our indoctrination camps, they didn't really teach us about money right. or finances or the economy. So we're relying on you and you're, you know, and you're surprised. Yeah. I mean, what a joke. Actually, I'd love to lean into that. What <laughs> last year, <laughs> I think it was, I did a, a tour with a, a local teacher here in the community. She shadowed me on in the work that I do. Anyway, I wonder how they are teaching the financial systems today in high school. I know as of last year, they will, were still teaching you how to balance your checking account, which I, I understand the reconciliation and all these other things, but you know, nobody writes checks anymore, or if you do, it's far and few between. But anyway, I'm just really curious how it is taught. Hmm. I wonder what they do teach. I know they certainly don't teach about this. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. I don't know how many. I wonder if we did like, hey, just even knowing people who who's in charge, who's who's like the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank. You know, this is some I would have no clue until I got into crypto. Right. Oh. Or like they were my client, too. So I obviously knew. But right. like most people who aren't in IT. Right. You're not going to know. Uh -uh. You're not going to know. Not unless you're in the financial sector. And even then, if you're in the financial sector, most of the people don't know. No, anyway. because when we have clients that meet with their financial advisor and they say the central bank digital currency is a conspiracy theory, that that financial advisor needs to get educated and fast because huh. we have a list of bills that we have right here on the sidelines. CBDC and stable coin hearing at the Congress, House Bill 3402, Power of Mint Act, Digital and Prevention Act, CBDC, Anti-Surveillance Act. Oh, yeah, it's a conspiracy theory. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, just, I would not want to be holding a bag of dollars when this is all done. That's for sure. You no. know? No. Just wild. Wild. It's so anyway, they're not going to raise rates, but you know, Jerome Powell's like, but we might. 
so it's like either do it now or just you know you're you're it's very manipulative it's oh, very simple <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> oh, oh yeah just a tad <laughs> yeah. yes so again no Another reason why I hold Bitcoin, okay, because I want money outside of the centralized system, just like I hold physical gold and silver. I want money outside the system, right? Ammunition, guns, food, water, energy. Try to get it all, you know, because we're we're just going, we're just going through a major shift, you know. Which is fascinating in and of itself, and it's a pretty cool thing to be and aware of. I mean, honestly, this is like, wow. This is really fascinating to really be present with. I mean, this is like the most exciting and scary time to be alive, right? right. Because we is. don't know, we don't know if there's an alien invasion coming. Oh, all of a sudden now, right? Now that they want to put us on digital IDs and harvest our data for, you know, algorithms, right? To tell us what 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 to think, right? Now all of a sudden it's like we see like congressional hearings about aliens. Is it aliens, Kelly? Is it an economic collapse? Is it World War Three? I mean, pick your pick the thing you think is going to fit on the bingo card. We should make a bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is yeah. it a cyber attack? Is it an EMP? <laughs> fear, 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 fear. <laughs> so much, so so much. And I saw, and I, and I just, you know, and I just laugh and I, and I get filled with joy because again, the light will win. Love will win. Humanity will win. Right. But like Kelly said, massive chaos in between. And we are in this chaos. We are absolutely in this chaos. Yeah. So have yourself a dog that keeps you grounded. Like this guy does me. And me, bro. <laughs> good thing. Yeah. And, you know, it's time to get educated and we can, we can probably make a buck or two, you know, off of some of these projects because I was looking at Stellar and Stellar is upgrading their protocol and they're bringing smart contracts to the Stellar blockchain. Okay. So if you don't know who Stellar is, Stellar is a blockchain company. The token is XLM. They recently purchased a good chunk of MoneyGram. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they do IBM WorldWire, right? Probably nothing. <laughs> you know? And now they're building smart contract platforms so we can replace the current systems, right? So if Kelly and I make an agreement, uh, we can actually go into a legal agreement in a smart contract that will be executed once the terms have been met, right? If I do this, then this happens, right? So very interesting. It's here, it's growing. Um, Hedera Hashgraph, right? So if you look at Hedera Hashgraph's governing board, very centralized, right? And, and again, some of these projects are in Bitcoin, but they're all gonna coexist right now, right? Oh, because we're in a centralized system. So, you know, if I if I look at uh, Hedera Hashgraph, they partnered with ServiceNow. ServiceNow is really interesting to me because I was an IT recruiter for over 20 years. And I actually um, would hire people who understood like all this service now and what they and what they did. Very interesting company. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's kind of like um, doing all these different uh, ESG with their clients. You know, uh, ServiceNow, I believe, is almost a hundred and twenty billion dollar company, mm -hmm. and they're implementing um, ESG for all of their customers. And when you look at the governing board of Hedera, it's IBM, it's Dell, it's Boeing, it's all these centralized companies. So I'm sure temporarily it'll do really, really well. Um, they also partnered with, you know, the Federal Reserve Bank for our CBDC, right? And there's multiple technology partners that are working on this project, but Hedera is one of them. I think the company is called Drip or Drop or something like that. But hopefully it will, it'll just be, you know, the USDC, like by a private company, but we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, there's so much adoption going on, right, Kel? Like I've never seen so much adoption during a bear market. Like I cannot believe, 
like the prices don't jump. Like take XRP, for instance, right. Ripple, right? Who, you know, is a big part of XRP, like building the software technology. But then you have like the XRP ledger that a lot of different companies are working with. And Ripple bought, a, uh, I think, 40% ownership of, of, um, of a, a remittance company called Tranglo. So Tranglo announces that they just partnered with SBI Remit, which SBI Holdings is one of the larger um, asset management companies, banks, like they're a huge financial institution in Japan. They're going live for cross-border payments in the Philippines, Thailand, um, Vietnam, Indonesia, and what, TikTok, TikTok in, in a couple of days, right? If this news came out during a bull market, XRP would have flew to the moon. Now I went up a penny. Yeah, so, Marcus just, just in that space, yep. Right, but we need patience because eventually the money flows back in. Right. Right. It gives us the opportunities to DCA, acquire more, dry powder on the side. That's right. Right. Because again, this is a moment of time. And just like what Kelly said, when we start to enter into a bull market, what are we going to say? Darn, I wish I DCA'd more. <laughs> yeah, it's like, darn it, I should have skip those 15 other cups of coffee I got. Yeah. All those. Right. Things. Because when XRP is two bucks and you've been accumulating it between 20 and 50 cents, you're going to be like, Oh, it's so expensive. I don't want it now. <laughs> right? You know I mean? right. And then, yeah, I mean that it's, it's all relative. We can't be greedy folks. Can't be greedy. But greedy. now's our time to DCA. Right. <laughs> and that's, that's the beauty of the whole thing. So here we go. It I is. love it. Well, this All was right. a fun podcast. <laughs> well, so remember, we have a Q&A coming up. You can find it under twowomenincrypto.com backslash classes and events, $10. Come join us. It's always a fun conversation, a deep dive, and we cover many topics. I love it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, check us out. And uh, I guess until next week. Mm, Hoddle on. Not on, folks. Your hosts for Two Women in Crypto are Andrea Caldero and Kelly Lair. You'll find more information and details regarding the Two Women in Crypto membership, educational and informative class and event offerings, and more via their website, twowomenincrypto.com. Both Andrea and Kelly are available for speaking events and offer private consultations focused on helping individuals navigate the future. Until next time, pot along.